I'm Jim Kircher, and somewhere in this pile is my own personal recycling stuff. The truck just dumped it off, and based on what I've learned from coming here, I think I probably put some stuff in there that I shouldn't have. It wasn't planned, it was just by chance that my stuff picked up in front of the house that Wednesday morning arrived during our visit to the Republic Services Recycling Plant in Hazelwood. Republic handles most of this area's commercial and residential recycling. Some cities own their own trucks and do the pickup. Others hire Republic to send its trucks, like this one emptying bins in Swansea in the Metro East. But it all ends up here. And what happens then? Well, that's what we came to see. General Manager Brent Batliner took us through this place from the beginning. This is where the signal stream comes in. To the end. Trucks are constantly coming. We load three to four rail cars a day of material going out. We load about four to eight overseas containers a day, and then several trucks going domestic with plastics, aluminum, steel, and so on. Those bundles will be used to make new paper, glass, and plastic products. But the business really got hit hard in 2018 when it lost one of its biggest customers for recycled paper. China said that what it was getting from America no longer met its standards. To understand that, it helps to know just how this business operates. So here's the thing that strikes you when you come here. First of all, how much stuff they handle, how many machines there are, and how many people are involved. Everything we do here is about sizing and shape. Right. All right. Okay. So once the material goes through that pre-sort room, outside that wall is a set of discs, a big metal discs. Now this can get pretty apart. complicated, so but it's, it's fascinating to watch because the piles that come in with everything mixed together, the single stream, it will all be sorted using gravity, screens, spinning discs, blowing air, magnets, human hands, into seven different groups of glass, metal, plastic and what they call fiber, different kinds of cardboard and paper. What happens, the material hits and it starts bouncing. Cardboard rides up over the top. It goes over three screens, so it flips. The cardboard comes out and goes down into a chute. All the paper in the containers fall through, come over this way. And they hit a whole other set of screening discs. Metal cans are pulled out and they end up over here for further sorting. Magnets attract the steel containers and send them into one bin and repel aluminum containers off into another. And plastics are separated into different groups by this machine that uses an optical scanner and jets of air. So this optical sorter is looking for number two HDPE, which are your detergent bottles, your milk jugs. And in this white ray of light, there's an infrared camera. And it's going to identify this as HDPE. And as the material goes off the end, it is going to blow this bottle off the belt and across the border. You ready? ready? At the end of the line, that milk jug you tossed into your bin ends up here, pressed into bales. Milk jugs, by the way, are made of the best type of plastic for recycling. The machines don't catch everything, and that's where the people come in. The machine has separated most of it, and they're looking for the one item that made it through that didn't belong, like the plastic bag. Or if that one plastic bottle got caught under paper and came with it, they can grab it and drop it on a chute to take it back where it belongs. It's a constant scene of movement and noises. Well, until it's not. Uh, there's a moment of silence here, which I'm guessing is probably not what you want to hear. No, right? you never want to hear the plant go quiet. That's correct. So what, what usually happens? Why, so why? we probably lose about an hour a shift of downtime uh, due to what we call operational downtime, not mechanical, not because the machine malfunctioned, but because something has jammed. Something has gotten clogged in the system. 99% of the time, it's an item we did not ask for. This is the kind of stuff that can gum up the works. Big pieces of plastic get caught up in the moving parts. Plastic grocery store bags take them back to the store recycling bin, not your single stream. Plastic bags are biggest minimuses. They wrap around this entire uh, facility. And they really hate videotapes. The tapes unwind and they wrap and wrap and wrap around the machinery and the moving parts. 
So imagine what happened last spring when people put their old garden hoses into their recycling bins. Shut us down for hours because if a 50-foot garden hose gets to our system and wraps around our equipment, we have to shut it down and, and, and manually cut it off. You know, if we just get household fiber, paper, junk mail, corrugated boxes, um, aluminum, steel, and plastic beverage and, and uh, household containers and glass bottles and jars, then, then you're giving us what we want. Styrofoam? Styrofoam's a no-no. Even when things work as they should, it's not a perfect system. Stuff does get through. Bales of this will contain a little bit of that. 98% paper is okay. our goal. But, and I'm looking, and here's a can, and here's a piece of plastic. Right, right. right. Yeah. It's less than 2%. It, it, this right. is fine. It's not perfect. But it's got to bug you a little bit. Right, it does, because <laughs> this and this are worth more money to me. Right. right? I want this, and my paper guy doesn't. And this is where China comes into the story. For 11 years, that's where Republic's low-grade paper was going. But last year, China decided there were too many contaminants in American bales, the metal, the plastic that should have been separated out, as well as paper and cardboard that was wet, greasy, and caked with food, stuff that should have been thrown out. So China all of a sudden just stopped buying from American recycling companies. There's still a very large demand for our fiber. Right, I mean, everyone's gonna get a box on their porch, right? I mean, we're using more and more boxes than ever before. It's the logistics of now, I've sold to the same paper mill in China for 11 years. Now we're trying to move millions of metric tons a month to some other part of the Asian rim, Korea, um, Indonesia, and so on. The logistics just aren't there. Transportation is a big part of that. So many container ships bring Chinese-made consumer goods to the U.S. and offer cheap cargo space for paper bales on the return trip. But less traveled routes to Asia mean higher shipping costs, and Republic is losing money on every bale. China's national sword campaign, the decision to tighten contamination restrictions on foreign waste, and stop accepting American shipments. That prompted another St. Louis recycler, Resource Management, to stop handling single stream. And that sent some municipalities scrambling to figure out what to do. The economics, the markets, the processes, the future of recycling, it's all kind of up in the air. And there's a regional effort by East West Gateway's 1STL initiative to address the challenges. Jennifer Wendt, who oversees University Cities Recycling, chairs the regional group. It is all about education, really, at this point. If we, need, if we want single stream to keep going and to be economical, people need to be a little more conscientious about what they put in there. For years, we were getting paid. We got paid for that, the recyclable material. And so not only were we not paying the landfill fee, but we were making that much money on the materials. So we were really offsetting our solid waste costs. So it was a good market for it that stuff. It was a stuff. great market, yeah. right. And so um, with the national sword, the markets have crashed. I mean, they're, they're not rock bottom, but, and they're starting to ease up a little bit, but definitely the tides change. So the municipalities are you know, paying for the recycling processing whereas we used to make money for it, make money on it. But um, I always tell people, you know, you don't sell when your stocks are down. And right now, where we are, it will move back up as we start building some more infrastructure to process those materials domestically, which is what we should have been doing, or what we should have anyway. Uh, what are the issues that have been coming up here? The major issue is contamination, and it doesn't mean uh, people think contamination means food, and it is food, but the biggest source of contamination are materials that don't belong in the bin. The biggest thing that everybody needs to know is to keep your materials that are acceptable clean, empty, and dry, and don't put anything in there that you don't think is recyclable. That's not on the list. Went works in U City's Public Works Department, which is one of the municipalities that's made a major commitment and investment in single stream recycling. At this point, we are sticking with the single stream because all of the processes that we have in place are geared towards single stream. So all those bins, all those trucks, 
That's what you're set up to do. Yes. You're going to stick with that. Right. And it is, you know, hundreds of thousands, you know, a truck could be two or $300,000 for an automated truck. You know, the carts aren't cheap. Everybody that is set up that way, it's a very automated system, um, less labor intensive, but then more labor at the actual recycling plant. In some parts of the city of St. Louis, they have shared recycling dumpsters in alleyways. And there are also green dumpsters for yard waste, brown dumpsters for trash. This works well, especially if they're all bunched together. But if they're spread out, there's always the temptation to just take whatever you've got and throw it in the nearest dumpster. That creates a lot of contamination in the single stream system. The city has its own recycling promotion and education campaign and a website, St. Louis City Recycles. But whether it's a small bin, a rollaway cart, or a big dumpster, mistakes made here will end up here. And changing that might take more than a polite request to follow the rules. You can't really control what I put in my bin. No, and it's, it's very difficult with the automated system and the carts because somebody rolls their cart out, the lids close, a truck comes by, dumps it in, and even if there's a camera on the truck, they won't see it until it dumps into the back of the truck. Some cities have sent out inspectors ahead of trucks to look into the bins, tagging ones with unacceptable stuff. Those are not picked up, and it's up to the residents then to sort it out and try again the next week. And it has had success. So it's something we need to stop and think about for sure. I don't think that single stream is dead, but I think that it needs to be really focused on keeping the materials clean. I think that we really had gotten to the point where we were pushing, when in doubt, throw it in your bin. But now the advice is, when in doubt, throw it out. You know, no, we can't have that contamination. And really, we like to blame China for this, but we were throwing trash in our recycling, which is why we're even in this situation. But the good thing is we've, we've come up with some different ideas. We've tossed around, well, maybe if we pull glass, say pull glass from the single stream and, and collect it separately because sorted glass is profitable and then we make a profit on the side, then that will offset some of our costs. So there's- But to collect glass separately is gonna cost- A whole nother route. Right, another right. system. It would. And yeah. so um, that would need, I mean, we'd need to do a study and really look into those things. But right now in this region, unless you've heard otherwise in your municipality, as far as single stream versus dual stream or something, single stream and it's all being recycled. Is it best to go on your municipality's website and find it or is there a single website that's good for everybody? Well, um, that's what we're working on right now. And we, and um, recycleresponsibly.org is our one STL regional message. Everything should be on that website for everybody. And it should be accurate for everybody that gets on there, except for maybe O'Fallon, Lake St. Louis, and there's some parts of St. Charles County. We really kicked off this regional message um, a few months ago. So now at the beginning of the year, we're going to really push the municipalities, get it out to all the municipalities. I've been talking, you know, everybody's been talking around, but really get a good push to get a standard, that standard message. Um, six main categories of materials, paper, plastic containers, metal containers, glass containers, cardboard, which is part of paper, and then cartons. We can take cartons and keeping plastic bags out of the recycling. Yeah, because if you can do that, you can tell me and teach me how to do it right. It solves a lot of problems. Absolutely. Um, we do four to 500 tons a day uh, of this material um, nonstop. Our problem now is 20% of what comes in the front door is contaminated by our consumers, right? If we can get the consumer to recycle correctly, empty, clean, dry, and just follow the list, give us the things on that list, we wouldn't be standing here talking today, right? Our problems would go away.